Good day, everyone. Welcome back to the channel. Um, firstly, I'd like to say a big thank you um, to everyone who's watched my EV videos that I've been putting out recently. I've certainly really enjoyed putting them out and I'm glad that uh, people are enjoying watching them as well. I'm what I'd call uh, an EV realist. I don't dislike EVs as such, but I do feel that they're being foisted on us at a far too fast a rate. And I think there's gonna be a huge number of problems um, coming very, very quickly down the line. And I don't think our governments have really thought any of this through. So if you like this kind of EV realist content, it would be great to have you as a subscriber. So in this episode, I'm gonna look at the quite likely possibility that car parks will ban or restrict EVs at some point in the near future. This is a real issue since the, um, the Luton fire, which whether it was started by an EV or not, and that's up for debate, there had to be some kind of accelerant in that fire that caused it to spread so fast that it destroyed an entire car park. It's highly, highly unlikely that a simple diesel or petrol fire would destroy an entire car park. The reason that fire spread so rapidly was because there had to be some kind of accelerant there, which caused the temperature and the heat and the energy um, to just increase to a point where it was impossible to contain. And the result you saw, uh, 1500 cars destroyed and the car park itself. So given that fact, I think it's not gonna be long before car park owners are gonna to have to think really, really carefully about whether they let EVs into their underground or multi-story car parks. And in this video, I'll talk about why. I'm gonna start with an article in The Telegraph um, from the 16th of October. Uh, the headline is, car parking spaces will have to be bigger because of electric car fires. 1960s era fire safety laws could be inadequate to tackle risks from EV batteries, says report. This is the report. We'll come on to that in a minute. Car park spaces should become wider and burning electric cars dunked in baths of water under proposed government guidelines to prevent battery fires spreading out of control. Ministers have been told that battery powered vehicles pose a medley of risks in indoor car parks, which could render 1960s era fire safety laws dangerously out of date. Areas of concern addressed in a government commissioned report included explosions of flammable vapor clouds emitted by electric vehicle batteries, as well as jets of fire and toxic water runoff from firefighting. The report from consultancy Arup, which makes a series of recommendations for changes to fire safety rules, said that there was a high degree of uncertainty about data on the fire risks of electric cars and that it is not yet understood whether their batteries become more of a fire hazard with age. So this, this is really the crux of the issue. This, this is the report from Arup. Um, it is all of 92 pages long. Quite a lot of that is references and definitions and stuff like that. But I have read this through so that you don't have to. It's pretty dry as you can imagine, but what it does say in summary is that there's gonna have to be a whole bunch of new um, firefighting measures installed in these uh, car parks, whether underground, whether underground car parks or multi-story car parks in order to deal with the additional risks of EV fires. Um, and these things include fire suppression systems. You know, your average sprinkler system is not gonna be able to deal with an EV fire. Increased structural fire resistances. The heat and energy released in an EV fire with temperatures up to like two and a half thousand degrees C is enough to melt structural members of a car park, which is probably what happened at Luton. Distance between parked cars, that's what the Telegraph article is saying. You're gonna to have to increase the space between EVs um, so that if one does catch fire, it's not gonna to spread to other cars around it. Firefighting water supplies, you need more water uh, to fight these fires. So they're gonna to have to think about how they get those larger volumes of water down to where the fire is or up to where the fire is. Water runoff control and containment. Yes, the other thing is that the water, once it's been used to douse an EV fire, is, is absolutely full of toxic chemicals which can't just be released into the, the sewage system or the drainage system. So you're gonna to have to have a way of um, collecting that water after it's been used and treating it before it's released uh, back into the environment. And they're even suggesting 
that you install thermal imaging cameras uh, in order to see when an EV starts to get a bit hot um, so that that hopefully will be an early warning that the battery is about to go into thermal runaway and you can get a head start on it. But, you know, everything that's re recommended in here is going to cost money, a lot of money. To retrofit all this stuff into underground or multi-storey car parks is going to cost an absolute fortune. And I think a lot of car park owners will simply say, nah, we're not going to do that. No EVs. We can't have any EVs parking here because we can't comply with the regulations. There might come a point where EVs can only be parked in an outside car park, um, in a special area which is designated for EVs, where there's much more space between the cars. And even owners of those car parks might say, well, you know, the EV takes up three times the space of a normal car. You know, we're going to charge you three times as much for your parking. I think it's going to be really interesting to see what happens um, with this kind of regulation uh, in the not too distant future, I would say. Anyway, that's just about it for this video. Let me know in the comments what you think. As always, if you've got any tips, you can send me them on Instagram down here or email up here. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.